Hey guys, Nathan here from PRP Physio again. Just had a few messages come through from a few clients of mine, just wondering two questions mostly. Um, so people just wanted to know what was the acute to chronic workload ratio and how was that worked out? Um, so probably the first one to answer is what is it? Um, so like I said in the other video, it is mostly comprised of a fatigue versus fitness ratio. Um, so most sporting clubs around the world will look at it on a one week to a four week ratio. So the four weeks is what they determine as like your fitness and your one week load is what they would determine as your fatigue. So most clubs at the local level, looking at sort of the semi-professional level that maybe don't have access to the GPS unit data that most professional clubs will have. Uh, may look at things like training length and training intensity. So let's say a soccer team trains on a Tuesday night for 90 minutes and player A says that was a eight out of 10 intensity. And then they train again on Thursday night. It was a little bit of a lighter session. So rated a six and it went for 90 minutes again. So for calculating Tuesday night's load, I would multiply eight times 90. And then for Thursday's load, I would calculate six times 90. And then I would look at what his game load was. So let's play, say he plays 90 minutes and he rates that an eight, eight and a half out of 10. So then I would multiply 8.5 out of 10 times 90. And then I would add those three numbers together. Uh, so that would give me my one week load for that player. I would then calculate that each and every week. So over four weeks, I'll then have my chronic load and then each week I'll be inputting my acute load and have a rolling average with my chronic load. So that gives you a good little snapshot of how it's commonly worked out. Um, at the professional level, a lot of clubs will have access to GPS data, GPS trackers that can give them a lot more information rather than just training intensity and training time. So a lot of these clubs will look at things quite specifically such as high speed running versus sprinting versus if you're looking at rugby league, the number of collisions. Uh, a lot of soccer clubs will assess the number of passes. Uh, the number of changes of direction or the number of decelerations or accelerations. So there really can be a lot of data that a lot of these clubs are able to pull out and they can look at that data and go, is player A ready to return to play? Uh, another one of the big things that I know Tim Gabbard speaks a lot of is preparing for the worst five minutes of each game. Um, so he did a bit of research at the NRL level and they found between trainings and the average game demands. There was a little bit of difference. Players had a small step up in intensity, but when they looked at the most intense five minutes of play, there was quite a big disparity between training intensity and game intensity. Uh, so that is a really big area where I think we need to go, okay, are players ready to be able to perform when we need them the most? And do we need to, be able to push our players a little bit harder during training to get them ready for those most important five or 10 minutes passages of play where we want them to perform and potentially the game might be on the line. That's a really important period of time that players need to be able to perform what they need to do on the day. Thanks guys.